Good night, guys. How are you today? Hello, guys. How are you today? Hello. How do you feel today, guys? Guys. Just give me a second, guys. Okay, guys, a couple of minutes more and we will start with the class. Today we have a long agenda. But don't worry, we will do our best effort in order to, to try to learn. Also, I prepared a, a PowerPoint in order to show um, has a little bit a little review about per B. And also we will have to watch a little video about simple present. And the rules for today. Uh, as yesterday, we have a, a winner. Ada won't be a victim for today, but for tomorrow, we will have another winner. And it, it won't be Ada. It won't be Ada. Uh, okay, the next time, please, you can be the next uh, winner of that safe base. Okay. We will start, guys, uh, a little review about this model. It's about this. Just give me a second, guys. As I promised to you yesterday, uh, we will have a little review about bird to be. And for example, the bird to be, what are the form of bird to be and also uh, how can we use the bird to be in sentence negative sentence and questions. Uh, to start, and the bird to be is divided in two pieces, as everyone remember. Am, um, are, is. Uh, we use am um, when the subject is. Somebody knows. I. And are. You, we, they. And you. You can use two kind of you. Remember, you one person. Just for uh, when the person is a second person. And when you said you for a little groups. And is? It. She, he, it. Nice. Okay. When we talk about first person, it's myself. For example, I am a teacher. I am 30 years old. I am happy to be here. If you can see, just. One subject can use EM is I. Next one, second person and little groups. Also, the bird to be, as you mentioned, it's you, we, they, you is the subject. The bird form of the bird to be is R. And we can use to describe some stuff about yourself. And you, your friends, or when you are talking about a subject in second person or a little group. For example, you are my best friend. We are from El Salvador. They are always on time. And you are the best class. 
the third person. As you mentioned, he, she, it uh, is when you are talking with a friend about other friend. The subjects are he, she, it. The only form of this case is is of the verb to be. And you can say, it, for example, he is a doctor. Sorry. <laughs> she is tall. And it is my pet. And the verb to be in negative form is this, this, this is the structure, the subject plus verb to be plus negative, not in this case, and complement. And the most important part of a sentence is this. How do you say punto in English? Not. That's right. If you don't use that, or period in this case, because that is when you use a computer or a cell phone. But when you are writing down with a pencil or pen, it's period. Or when you're reading. If, you're, if you don't use a period, the structure is not complete. Uh, first person is I'm not. Second person. Second person form. Or not. Next one. It's not. Also, uh, we can use a contraction. In this case, it's isn't. And you is aren't. And also, you with a and you. And first person is I'm not. Uh, the structure for questions. It's better to be subject and complement. As every question the structure hard always will be the what's the name of this? Let me remind. It's the auxiliary bear in this kind of cases, this auxiliary bear is bear to be. These are some examples. Am, um, are, is, I, as, am. Um. I got a question for you. How do you pronounce a question about yourself? For example, eh, como dirías, soy un estudiante? That would be la, the person who answered this question won't be a victim for tomorrow. Am I a student? We have a winner. David, congratulations. You won't be a victim for tomorrow. Yes, it's true. The pronoun is am I? Am I a student? In this kind of cases, am I nervous? Am I a doctor? Is it a pet? She is a doctor. Is she a doctor? Sorry, I feel a little bit sleepy. My bad. Okay, it's time to practice. Oh, I have some. Okay, just give me a second, guys. Just a second.
the statements that you see on the screen. I walk to school. I don't live far from here. You ride your bike to school. You don't live near here. He works near here. He doesn't work downtown. She takes the bus to work. She doesn't drive to work. We live with our parents. We don't live alone. They use public transportation. They don't need a car. Contractions. Don't equals do not. Doesn't equals does not. The examples illustrate how we can form positive statements and negative statements. Let me start by explaining how we can form positive statements. In order to form positive statements in the simple present, you need to follow this formula. Subject plus verb plus complement. For example, I walk to school. I is the subject. Walk is the verb. And um, to school is the complement. Let's take a look at uh, our next example. You ride your bike to school. You is the subject. Ride is the verb. Your bike to school is the complement. There is a particular rule that I would like to explain as well. And that has to do with the third person. First of all, whenever we refer to the third person, we're talking about he, she, and it. So the rule is, in the simple present, whenever we make statements with the third person, we will add an S to that verb. Let's take a look at that particular rule. He works near here. Instead of work, we say works. And once again, this is because we are talking about he. And by the way, that could be the name of a person as well. For example, John works near here. How we can form negative statements in the simple present. In order to understand this topic, I would like to show you the auxiliary verbs which we will use. Do and does. We're going to use do not. They. We're going to use does not for the pronouns he, she, and it. And the contraction for those pronouns are don't and doesn't. Now let me write the formula. We're going to have a subject plus don't or doesn't plus the verb plus some kind of complement. So if we take a look at one of our examples, I don't live far from here. I is the subject. Don't is the auxiliary verb. Live is the verb. And then the complement is far from here. Let's take a look at one more example. She doesn't drive to work. She is the subject. Doesn't is the auxiliary verb. This is the third person that I was talking about earlier. Drive is the verb. 
In this case, I would like for you to notice that we don't add an S, and the reason is because we have an auxiliary verb. So every time there is an auxiliary verb, we will omit the rule of adding an S. To work is the complement. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to describe your transportation habits and also talk about the transportation habits of friends and relatives. The idea is to make positive and negative statements about yourself and others. For example, I don't drive to work. I take the bus. My sister drives to work. She has a new car. After you finish this exercise, please share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, guys, my apologies in this couple of cases. Uh, oh, the light, just give me a second. Okay, okay, guys, uh, what do you think about the video? Do you understand about the rules in order to talk about simple present? No. No se preocupen, eso es algo que vamos a ver ahorita. Para eso ocuparemos la pizarra. Okay. The simple present structure is the next one. Subject plus verb. Uh, base form plus complement plus period. Okay. I will do this. Onisi, can you tell me the subject? that we can use in a sentence. Um, Jay. What else? You, we, she. you, yes, that's right. She, he, he, it, and I. And this kind of case is I. I will need that all of you, one of you, provide me a bear in base form. Run. Leave. Okay, and Gordon. Leave. Leave de irse or leave de vivir? De vivir. Okay, next one. Esdras, a verb, please. Whatever verb. Ada, a verb, please. Uh, play. David, can you provide me a verb? Run. Run. Okay, thank you. Um, Lo siento, estaba escuchando, leyendo que uno de sus compañeros tiene problemas con el micrófono. Muy bien, Esdras, en ese caso, escribe en el chat, por favor, un verbo. 
If you can provide us a bear, it would be great. Francisco, can you provide me a verb? Um, walk. Another one. Um, drink. Thank you. And Carmen, can you provide me a bear, please? ¿Me puedes repetir la pregunta, por favor? Sí, ¿me puedes dar un verbo en, en inglés, Carmencita, por favor? Wall. ¿Podría repetir? Walk, de caminar. Mm, ya está. Queremos uno que no sea de los que están aquí arriba en la pizarra. Por favor. Puede ser cualquiera. Go. Go. Eh, ¿Alguien más me puede repetir? Dar un... Drive. Eat, drive. Car, act. Mm, eh, uno más. Uno. Uno. Read. Read. Uh -huh. And right now, the compliment. Okay. I would like to um, explain this. When we use they, you, we, you, and I, the pair B will be in base form. It's, it's like normal form without any addition or addition in there. For example, they live in Santa Elena. You play soccer every night. Uh, we run uh, together. together. And I drink um, milk. Yeah, no beer. Very good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very healthy. Okay. But right now, when we are talking about third person, the pair change. It's a rule that you have to add sometime. Yes. And other one is that's called um, uh, well, let me show you irregular verbs and regular verb. Just give me a second. Let me sh share this part. are some example of regular bear oh, that you have to add yes it's not here yes. but in this kind of cases it's necessary to add just an s for example 
this one. Thus, you can use for this group just two. I do exercise. You do the work, the homework. We do yoga, but what about the third person? It's necessary at yes. <clears throat> And the last one also reads. This is like normal. Complement and periods. Está un poco más claro. Lo explicaré en español. Hay verbos en inglés que son irregulares, pero no simplemente como van a tener una distinta forma en su pasado y su presente y su futuro. No, sino que son irregulares el momento de ocuparlos en simple present. ¿Por qué? Porque vas a tener que agregarle y es en, so en vez de solo es. Eh, yes, Carlos. Entonces, ¿los verbos irregulares se ocupan en el presente de simple? No exactamente. Vaya. Es que son dos cosas diferentes, el verbo irregular y esto. Esto es una regla que va a haber en ocasiones que vos vas a tener que agregarle ES para hablar en plural, pero eh, para hablar en tercera persona. Ejemplo, el verbo DAS. Otro es el verbo GO que lo va a escribir GOS, lo va a pronunciar así. Pero, ¿qué hay de los otros verbos? Verbos como bribe, solo lo agregas S, red, le agregas S. Pero estas, estas solo son excepciones. Excepciones que se ocupan con he, she, it. Sería mejor llamarlas excepciones. ¿Preguntas? Con ES solo sería para las excepciones tú y Hay más. Uh, just give me a second. Let me show you this. This is the rule. Para hablar en simple present, Si el verbo termina en vocal, se le agrega solo una S. Y si culmina con S, se le agrega S. Normalmente se hace así, pero tenemos ciertas, pues, por así decirlo, excepciones. Y aquí está. Esto no le toman importancia. A esto todavía no. Que eso es un tema un poco más avanzado. Que esos son los modal verbs. Pero hablando de simple present. Estos son los que deben de tomar en cuenta. S. Las como excepciones. Irregularmente. When a verb ends in a vowel. Or. S. You just need to add ES. The other one, just is. Preguntas? Yes. 
Okay, we will continue with the class guide. We will do this little assessment. I will need help in order to answer this test. Destruction, complete the sentence with the correct verb form. In this kind of cases, my family and I live or lives. Live. Next one, my wife and I work or works. Work. work. So we work or work. Works. Are you Walk. sure? Walk. Walk. Remember, we is not third person. It without S. Our daughter, Emily. <clears throat> Work or works? Works. Work. So she drive or drives? Drives. Or son da, don't or doesn't. Doesn't. He writes or write. Right. 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 Conversation two. My parents lives or live. 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 My mother take or takes. 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 My father is retired, so he doesn't or don't work now. Doesn't. Doesn't. He also use or uses. 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 So they don't or doesn't. Don't. 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 Very well, guys. You did a great job. Right now, we will continue with the next topic. But first of all, I would like to know, do you have any question about this process? About this theme? Do you have questions? No. Well, Walter. right now. Thanks. Right now, by the end of this class, you will be able to make simple present statements using regular verbs. As I mentioned, the irregular verbs are verbs that are different, past, present, and future. Just give me a second. I will play a video in order to explain a little bit more eh, para las personas que tienen problemas con los audios pueden ir leyendo aquí. Hi everyone. In this class you'll learn to form simple present statements using irregular verbs. Let me start by explaining verbs. In English we have two types of verbs. Regular verbs and irregular verbs. Regular verbs form the majority of the verbs in English and irregular verbs are a small portion of all the verbs that exist in the English language. We need to learn both in order to achieve English fluency. In this case we will talk about three irregular verbs that are used all the time to express ourselves. Have, do, and go. Let's Analyze the chart on the screen. Simple present statements with irregular verbs. I, you, we, they. He, she, it. I have a bike. My father has a car. We do our homework every day. My mother does a lot of work at home. My parents go to work by bus. The bus goes downtown. Let's take a look at the examples on the left-hand side of the chart. 
I have a bike. We do our homework every day. My parents go to work by bus. What we're trying to illustrate in this case is that when forming simple present statements and whenever we use the pronouns I, you, we, and they, the verbs will not change at all. If we look at the examples on the right hand side of the chart, we want to demonstrate that whenever we talk about the third person, he, she, or it, these verbs have, do, and go will change and they change as follows have equals to has do equals to does go equals to goes let's analyze the examples on both sides of the chart I have a bike notice how the verb have changes whenever we talk about my father my father has a car we do our homework every day notice how that changes whenever we talk about my mother my mother does a lot of work at home the same with my parents go to work by bus the bus goes downtown now is your turn to practice these three irregular I would like for you to form sentences about yourself and relatives and apply the rules that we just learned. Uh, bueno, chicos, ¿qué opinas sobre el video? What do you think about this video, guys? Guys, what do you think about this video? Well, uh, my next big team, Onise, what do you think about the video? It's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Entendí el uso de, de los verbos al momento de usar el I, you, we, and there, que dice que no cambia su forma. Exacto. Remember, we have irregular verbs and regular verbs. The verb irregular changes past, present, and future. And the regular verbs just is necessary add ed in past and present and perfect present. Just give me a second. Right now, I will just give me a second. I will show you a new assessment. Is this? If you have doubt or question, just let me know. The instruction is complete the sentence, select the correct verb form. In this come of cases, my parents have or has. Have a house in the suburb. My mom and dad goes or go? Go. Thank you. My parents are very busy, so I do or does? Do. A lot of work at home. Do. My brother doesn't live with us. He have or has an apartment in the city. Has. He goes or go to school all day. Goes. 
And he do or does his homework at nine. Does. Yes. I have or has. I have. His name is Jason. We go or goes. Go. 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 And sometimes we do or does. Do. Do. Okay, it's time to verify. Congrats. You have a hundred percent in this assessment. Okay, Lara, like a little recap today, we learn about vocabulary. Ah, this is about that we talked about yesterday. Also, we learn about the simple presence, the structure, also the different of the pair at the moment to use a third person and the irregular verbs and how to use it. Also, we made an assessment. And right now we are almost ready for this lesson. But before I start this one, let me know, do you have any doubt or question about the lesson that we that we already verify? Uh, yes, uh, what is the meaning of simple present? Presente simple. That's que, the meaning. Como, como lo entenderíamos? Simple present is in order to describe daily routines that you do. For example, I take a shower every morning. This is a simple present. I is the subject. Take is the verb. A shower in the morning is the complement. Also, uh, you can use to describe uh, activities, activities that you do every day. For example, I do exercise every morning also. Más que todo para eso ocupamos el presente simple. Para describir acciones de nuestro diario vivir. Thanks. Another question, guys. Muy bien. En ese caso, we'll continue with the next steps. Just give me a second, guys. Okay, guys, we will continue with the assessment number this. By the end of this class, you will be able to form simple present question. Additional, you practice your core presentation about daily routines, which illustrated how this topic is used in real life settings. Al final de la clase, vamos a poder ser capaces de formar preguntas en presente simple. Adicionalmente, vamos a practicar una conversación acerca de la rutina diaria, cual ilustrada en este tema. Es utilizado en un escenario en vida real. Well, I will play the video and after that we will practice. Hi everyone, in this class you'll learn how to form simple present questions. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation about daily routines, which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. I would like to get started by practicing a conversation, which illustrates how this topic is used. Let's listen and practice. Let's go to the park on Sunday. Okay, but let's go in the afternoon. I sleep late on weekends. What time do you get up on Sundays? At 10 o'clock. Oh, that's early. On Sundays, I get up at noon. Do you eat breakfast then? Sure, I have breakfast every day. 
Then let's meet at this restaurant at one o'clock. They serve breakfast all day. We just heard a conversation in which lots of questions were asked and answered. I would like to explain how these questions are formed. Let me start by explaining the auxiliary verbs that are used when forming questions in the simple present. Do and does are the auxiliary verbs. As we start forming questions, you must also understand this rule. Do equals to I, you, we, and they. Does equals to he, she, and it. This means that we will use the auxiliary do whenever we use the pronouns I, you, we, and they. And we will use the auxiliary does whenever we use the pronouns he, she, and it. Having said this, let me write the formulas to form questions. For yes or no questions, do or does plus subject plus the verb plus some kind of complement. For WH questions, WH word plus do or does plus a subject plus a verb plus some kind of complement. Now let's take a look at the simple present questions on your screen. Do you get up early? No, I get up late. Does he have lunch at noon? No, he eats lunch at one o'clock. Do they drive to work? Yes, they drive to work every day. What time do you get up? At ten o'clock. What time does he have lunch? At one o'clock. When do they drive to work? Every day. On the left side of the chart, you can see yes or no questions. So if you recall the formula that I mentioned a minute ago, for yes or no questions, do or does, plus a subject, plus some kind of verb, plus a complement. Uh, we're going to take the first example. Do you get up early? Do is the auxiliary verb. You is the subject. Get up is the verb. And early is the complement. And of course, we need to add a question mark at the end. The next question. Does is the auxiliary verb. He is the subject. Have is the verb. Lunch at noon is the complement. Of course, we need to add a question mark at the end. Now, let me show you WH questions. Once again, if you recall the formula that I mentioned a minute ago, for WH questions, WH word plus do or does plus the subject plus some kind of verb plus some kind of complement. Uh, let me select the first question on the right side of the chart. What time do you get up? What time is the WH word? Do is the auxiliary verb. You is the subject. Get up is the verb. And let's just analyze one more example. What time does he have lunch? What time is the WH word? Does is the auxiliary. He is the subject. Have is the verb. Lunch is the complement. Now it's your turn to practice these concepts by making as many examples of your own as you possibly can. Focus on making questions and answers. Form questions about the routine of your family, friends, and coworkers. After you complete this task, share it in our discussion forums.
Okay, guys, uh, what do you think about this video? ¿Qué opinan? ¿Qué aprendieron? Esdras, what do you learn about this video? ¿Qué aprendiste, Esdras? Muy bien. En this video, guys, uh, we learn about the two kind of questions that we can make it. For example, the simple que uh, question that you can answer with yes or not, hardly ever start with the auxiliary verb in this kind of cases is do. For example, do you get early? You can say yes, you can say no. But if you want to know more details, it's necessary that we can use the WH question. In this kind of cases, what time do you get up? Hey, I get up at six o'clock. In this kind of cases, you already know that that person is a morning person and also that they get up or she or he at six o'clock. Also, the WH question are many kind, but where, when, how, and why, who, and which. Well, guys, right now it's time to practice. We will do or we will make some, just give me a, some example. I want to know how to say that. ¿Cómo podemos formular esta pregunta en inglés? Falta el verbo. Ah, lo siento. What time do you want to work? That's right. And question mark, what time do you go to work? As we already learned, WH questions, auxiliary pair in this kind of cases is the bird uh, do. I am hungry, I ate the subject. The subject plus the bird and complement. Don't forget the question mark. Another example.
¿Cómo puedo traducir esto? Con una double edge question. Where do you from? Where are you from? That's right. Pero si ya sabemos que la persona es un ejemplo guatemalteca y solo queremos corroborar. It's the same questions, but with one, you can get more details, but the other one just yes or not. Okay, guys, it's almost over. Do you have any question or doubt about these questions or the 10th? Teacher, in, in the yes, no questions, maybe or sometimes can be answers. Mm, yes, we can answer those questions, but remember, uh, the, those questions doesn't allow you to express more detail. For example, uh, esas tipo de preguntas no te van a permitir el poder responder más. And yes or no question. For example, it could be, do you have a pencil? Tú tienes un lápiz? Tú le vas a decir sí, no. Pero no podrías responderle diciendo, ah, si sí tenía un lápiz y era rojo. En cambio, cuando usamos una de las eh, palabras de doble question, podríamos usar, what kind of pencil do you have? Y estás asumiendo que esa persona tiene un lápiz. Y si tiene que decir, no, I don't have any kind of pencil. But what happens if that person has a pencil? Entonces, yes, I have a blue pencil. Look at that. Siempre te va a dar la forma de poderla responder. Y la forma más adecuada es sujeto. It's, no, it's primero, yes or not. Que lo estoy enviando el privado, lo siento. coma, subject, and complement. Podría ser no, I don't. Esa podría ser la respuesta de una sí o no pregunta. No, I don't, or yes, I do. Another question, guys. preguntas o todo claro muy bien chicos ya no les robo tiempo ya les robé un minuto por favor cuídense eh, nos vemos mañana mañana estaríamos dándole un repaso más a la doble question y por favor por favor eh, teacher una pregunta uh -huh. eh, así como creo que hay tres acá siempre en la misma empresa donde yo trabajo uh -huh. el día de mañana entramos a turnos de noche Entonces, no sé si han quedado con la empresa que nos darán la hora o no nos presentaríamos mañana a la clase. Y al yeah. final de tanto, si no, no llegaría a afectar eso, no estar presentes. Eh, bueno, de antemano, pues les agradezco que me hayas hecho ver eso. Eh, no se me ha notificado nada respecto a si tus jefes te darían permiso. Es una de las... Decisiones que toman tus jefes. Pregúntale a tu jefe, eh, a cada uno, de que ustedes tienen diferentes jefes, pregúntenle si les van a habilitar la hora para tener esa clase o si no se les van a habilitar. Eh, no, de mi parte, sí, dígame, Francisco. Eh, no, no sé quién es que preguntó, pero en mi caso, creo que eso es de termo también, ¿verdad? Eh, así es, solamente que estoy en el grupo 1. Vale, fíjate que en mi caso yo hablé con el jefe de turno y yo le consulté si íbamos a tener esos espacios cuando estuviéramos de noche. Él me dijo que no, ya que las clases son grabadas. 
Entonces, eh, en los descansos nos iban a, a transmitir estos videos. Sí me parece injusto, Luis, y nos gustaría que nos apoyaras en esa, en esa parte, porque prácticamente solo es una hora la que nos vamos a ausentar. Y generalmente, pues, siempre tenemos a alguien que nos pueda cubrir de una u otra manera, solo es una hora. Eh, muy bien, Francisco. Yo le voy a notificar eso a mi jefe. Eh, voy a hablar con ella al respecto, pero les comento que es una decisión que mayormente toma tu, tu arrendador, pues ellos saben cómo está la carga de trabajo que tienen para ese momento. Yo sé que muchos de ustedes pueden ser reemplazados por ese momento, pero ya es una decisión que eh, van a tomar los jefes como tales. Pero no te preocupes, yo lo haré saber. Si en dado caso no se puede, no hay ningún problema, chicos. Eh, yo voy a estar enviando pues durante el día parte del material de la clase como pues imágenes o diapositivas de lo que vamos a ir viendo y ustedes traten de, de revisarlo y si tienen dudas por favor díganmelo es más creo que mañana también voy a darle una repasada al simple present porque vi que muchos quedaron con duda con respecto a, a los verbos irregulares como has, does y goes que son como excepciones que vamos viendo normalmente. Eh, ¿Hay algo más en lo que pues, queramos nosotros uh, compartir antes de irnos? En ese que podrías compartir, bueno, yo no lo tengo, eh, tu número de teléfono para poder hacer consultas. Uh, sí, ahí estoy en el grupo. Es, ya les escribo. Permítame. Te voy a enviar una carita feliz. Cualquier duda o consulta, no duden en escribir. Ese es mi número personal, ahí estoy. Por okay. favor, eh, le pido perdón a los que no pude verles el chat, pero en serio quería que tenía muchas cosas que hacer en la misma vez. Mañana será una clase más dinámica. Por favor, espero que se los ruego estén más activos. Así es que nos vemos mañana. Adiós. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.